Ken Bostrom Ministries. Beginning January 2018, Ken Boster Ministries engaged in a whole new assignment by entering the airwaves of the world. Don't miss Ken and Mary Boster Ministries Live. Welcome to our program. You realize our, our background here is a little bit different than you used to. You used to it in an adult bookstore or bookshelves. But today we're going to talk about children and basically not just little, little kids, but uh, the preteens type age because they are neglected. We need to reach them. And, you know, in Ken Boster Ministries, our mission is to reach a lost, teach a found, and preach the word so we can all be united in his purpose. And uh, one of the things we want to do in this day, in this hour, is uh, during this COVID crisis, um, you know, it's, it, the virus is real, but the, the rest is... It's, it's causing fear in a lot of the people that, that is not necessary fear. And so what, it, what we want to do, and I have Pam Beery with me today from Household yes. Harvest International Ministries, and she has a great heart to, to reach the children. Now, uh, Pam, uh, we were listening to a minister the other night that mm -hmm. said the second uh, cause of death in 10-year-olds is suicide. suicide. Yes. 10-year-olds. Yes. That means these children have no hope. When you have no hope, suicide comes in. Mm -hmm. That's spirit of suicide. Yeah. And the children nowadays have been fed with, they have been brought up with uh, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And witchcraft has been the normal for them, not the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I think one of the things is a lot of people are raising children instead of training children. You know, you raise cattle, yeah. you raise yeah. cucumbers, you raise different things, but you train children. Train, up. train them up yeah. in the way that they should go. Yeah. You know, train them up in the Word of God, train them up to know God and to honor God. And um, you just need to train up these children yes. in, these, yes. in these days. So, um, Pam, what do you think about uh, the children going through this COVID crisis right now? Well, I think that there's uh, so much fear and uh, because everyone's in it, that's the thing. It's pulled the whole world into this, yeah. you know. And uh, it's, it's way out of balance. Way and, out of balance. You know, I mean, we need to wash our hands. We need to be sanitary. And that's mm -hmm. one of the wonderful things we have about our country when we learned how to, you know, the importance, like you were talking about the doctor when he started washing his hands, really, you know, they really wash up and scrub good. Yeah, and it saved and, and a life. There, yeah, yeah, because they were having a lot of, a lot of deaths, mm -hmm. a lot of diseases and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and he, he, I was, he uh, started washing his hands. And, you know, they locked him up in a sanitarium because they figured he was crazy. Wow! No, I didn't yeah, know and that. did you know yeah. a lot of the, a lot of the plagues around the world they blamed on the Jewish people, mm -hmm. because the Jewish people didn't get the plague because they washed their hands. So that's just a that's just something a health wise that we should but be you know, doing. But you don't need to hear it 20, 30 times a day on television about washing your hands. I mean, it's like it's, everything is overdone. It's overdone. And there are and there are certain people that we know that have been raised up that are, are not. They want it to be extended mm -hmm. for wrong purposes. They don't. They have a different agenda than right. God. They have a different agenda. So let's talk about April 30th, what we're finding out about that, Mary. I think we should jump back in with what is today. Today is April, April 30th. 30th. Yeah, not you're not watching it on April 30th, well, but this, we're recording yes. it on yes. April 30th. Yes. And there's a man named Will Ford. Yes. Now, Will Ford, uh, we actually saw him in person you did. And, in Praise Chapel. Yeah, remember that big bucket, that big pot? Him and that other guy, I can't remember his Lockhart, Matt, I think it was Matt Lockhart. Um, one of them, Matt Lockhart's family was slave owners. His, that, for in, in a certain place. And they found out that Will Ford's family was from the lineage of the slaves. So they were friends, but they found out one of them owned the slaves of their ancestors and the other one was a slave. 
That's interesting. I didn't know that. Part. Yeah. Well, and so he teaches at Christ for the Nations, Will Ford, and he has two, two boys, one of them seven, and his name is Benjamin. And Benjamin woke up and, and uh, you know, he was teaching online. He, um, well, tell, he, him, tell him that, that they, how they prayed over their food. Oh, yes. It's five and seven years The year boys, old. without being told what to do, they say, God bless yes. this food and kill the coronavirus. Kill the coronavirus, yeah. <laughs> So they, they, they didn't know anything about what a coronavirus was. Mm -hmm. And so what he did is um, he, he was, uh, Matt, uh, Will Ford was, uh, was teaching online on a computer. And he heard his son tell his mom, uh, the virus is going to end on, on April 30th. And his mom said, It's going to die, he said. It's going to die. It's going to die. It's going to die. Yeah. And, and he said, uh, his mom said, well, why do, why do you say that? And he said, well, God told me. So when Will Ford was off the, the, um, yeah. the call or, or the teaching, then he, he called his seven-year-old boy, Benjamin, and he says, uh, tell me about what God told you. And he said, I had a dream, and this big plant came out of the earth, and it had a big crown on its head, and then it, and and then it the, started, yeah. crowns started popping up all over the earth. And then he said, then a big lion came and, and, and with lamb's feet. Now, how many children know that Jesus is the lion and the lamb? Yeah, and he was saying it in his yes. dream. He, God was showing and it to he, him in his he dream. He came to kill the virus. Yeah. And he said, God said it was going to die on April 30th. And so we're excited about that. We believe the prophets. If yes. you know these little children at seven years old can be a prophet. Samuel, mm -hmm. at a very young age, was a prophet. And then Jesus told the Lord told him about when it would die. Yeah, exactly. He said it would die April thirtieth. Mm -hmm. So we believe it. We just yeah. believe that this now, dead today in the world. We had we had a um, we have a millennials on our Texas Apostolic Prayer Network Council. And one of the millennials had a, had a dream, I don't think it was yesterday, I think it was the day before. And she, she saw herself in this, in this place to eat, and she was sitting higher than everybody else, and she said on the wall, people were writing things. And she picked up a marker, and she looked, and she saw uh, like the earth, uh, like the shape of the earth. And then she saw a flat line, and on the flat line it was counting dates. And then she left and she thought, well, I need to go back there and take a look at those dates and see what that's all about. And so she went back there and um, she looked at the dates and it said January, February, March, April. And then it says coronavirus was going to end oh, on and, that day. And tell them about the dad. The little boy did not know what that crown meant. Yes, he did not know that coronavirus had a crown. Yes. And he yeah. said that, um, the word that, that plant had a big crown on it. Yeah, and, and the crown, the word, uh, the, the, the word for the crown was corona. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so Jesus was removing that crown mm -hmm. because he is the king of kings. Yeah. And so. Uh, I believe that God really wants to speak yes. to the children and use the children in that, these And that's what we're going to be talking about is how much yeah. God wants. And, and, and you've got some things that you've looked up, Mary, about children that started revivals and how God. Uh, I think that would be a really good place for us to start with. It's just to talk to you about the children, and God wants to use the children. And the, and the, the devil is trying to hit our children younger and younger, and try their morals, trying to give, uh, you know, and the Lord told me, this is something that really, really hurts the heart of God, is the innocence of children that are being mm -hmm. hit hard. And we're going to get into the Word in a little bit. Mary's going to share some things that, uh, about the revivals that really were started by children. And God says this re revival also will be, there'll be many, many children just like this little Benjamin yeah. that God will use. Yeah. And uh, that will be wonderful to know little Benjamin was the one that saw that this died on the 30th yeah. because Jesus took his, took his crown back. You know, uh, I, I was uh, looking up some, some children that had been used in revival. You know, because revival yeah. is coming. Yes, we are going to have a great awakening. Yeah. And in Acts chapter 2, he said, Your sons and your daughters shall pro like, prophesy yes, yes. in the last days. Yes. And uh, I, I was reading a story last night about an um, 11-year-old group minister leader. Mm. He was a group minister I leader. Love that. 11 years old uh, from Brazil. And revival and reformation all started when Clifferson, is his name, attended a children's meeting and was inspired to start a small group ministry. He began inviting his, his school friends and neighbors, giving them books and materials to read. Can you imagine a, 
an 11-year-old starting a ministry like that and it ends up changing the nation? Yes, glory. Yeah. You know, that's what God wants. Yeah. For three years, Clifford, uh, Clifferson had been running a weekly small group on Friday nights from 23 to 28, and they, they reached the nation. And, and um, they, had, they, they had tag time, T-A-G time. I love that. Tag time. It's called ta time alone with God time. Time alone. Yeah, yeah so they would, they would break up into, into tag times, and, and that's awesome. And, you know, um, their story about George Whitfield. Now, Whitfield, he, every Monday evening, he would go to hospitals and minister to children in hospitals. And he said on Thursday, he preached to children of the city with congregation of nearly... 20,000 wow. children. Wow. 20,000 children wow. uh, in the park. It was remarkable that many children under conviction and everywhere great power and apparent success attend the word preached. Now, guess what? They didn't have flannel boards. They didn't have skits. They didn't have all these games. He preached the word yes, yes. and 20,000 children wow. sat and, and listened Glory to him God. preach a word. Yes. The word is what works. Yes. The word, we don't have to dumb down the Bible no. for these kids. No. These kids want meat. They want to chew meat. Mm -hmm. You remember when, when the, um, Billy Broom used to talk about that, uh, that church in Thousand Oaks, California. And that church in Thousand Oaks, California, the, the Lord spoke to, to the pastor's wife, start teaching about the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so on every Sunday night, they would teach about the blood of Jesus, but they would cancel nursery and children's church at night. And the children had to sit underneath that teaching on the blood. And so when that earthquake hit Los Angeles, children had more faith than their parents did in the power of the blood. A childlike faith. Yeah. yeah grabbed, and see, children, grabbed children it, yeah. grabbed onto yeah. that, yeah. how the blood was so powerful that it could protect and the family. They didn't see it, Mary. It's just a story. They took that as though that was, Real. That was a reality for them. Yeah. And they trusted that God was going to protect them and do something. Mm -hmm. And it's all about faith, building faith. You know, that Absolutely. When he talks about childlike faith. You know, a lot, of, a lot of parents that really are word people, they don't want their kids in, in children's church because all they do is play games. They want their children to hear the word. Yes. yes. Now, my children, my grandchildren in Florida, um, their their favorite time of the week is Sunday morning and Wednesday night. That's wonderful. They 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 are anxious to get there. They're excited. They have they, it's the highlight of their week because it's a Holy Ghost church where they don't dumb down the word. Mm -hmm. And and those children, they learn they learn the power of God. And um, that's what children want. That's what yes. children need right now. Yeah. That's what they need. They need that's the Word they of God. Need. They need, they need mm -hmm. that standard. They need to have, there's, you know, and there's protection in that, but that, there's no, there's, children aren't going to commit suicide when they have their trust and their confidence in a God that loves them. They have hope. They have hope, and they, and they know that, mm -hmm. you know, Christ can use the hope of glory. Yeah. And children begin to learn, um, and uh, just like these the little books that we have, when the children, when that's when they wake up in the morning and the Jesus is on their hearts and they're thinking about God and they get into the Word of God and they journal. We're going to talk about that some too. But then, uh, and they think about God being with them all day long. And so, if, and, and they're not going to be looking for a boyfriend. They're not going to be looking for, uh, you know, they, all the insecurities can be gone. So much that Mary can happen in a child that just gets filled with the knowledge of God and mm -hmm. the love of God. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know there's a lot of children uh, that never get brought to, brought to church. They never hear the Word of God. And they and these children go out into the world and they, they have that hole inside of them, that void that only Jesus can fill. Yeah. And they try to fill it with, with girlfriend, boyfriends, uh, sex, um, drugs. Wrong friends. Wrong friends. Yeah. They try to fill it with anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah. And um, I tell you what, these children are in danger right now. Let me tell you, Mary, this, as you said that, I just feel to jump in here about the Holy Spirit quickening this in my heart. But when I was a little girl, we didn't go to church, and there was a lot of arguing in my, phone, in my home, very dysfunctional, 
uh, because we didn't have Jesus. You know, yeah. that's any home that doesn't have Jesus, there's dysfunction there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and a sweet little neighbor lady, Mrs. Graves, came to my home, and her son was in school with me, but he didn't go to church with his mom. And so she came up on the porch, and I remember she asked my, my mom, she said, Miss Secor, she said, um, would any of your children like to go to church? And I just happened to be standing near her, and my mom said, no, no. And I said, I would, and I didn't even know why I said that. I said, I would. And she said, okay, honey. She said, you can come go with me. And I said, Mom, I want to go. And she said, well, go on. I just ran out the door, you know, went with her. Later on, my sister Becky went some too. But it was right around the corner. And I think Mary was a little Methodist church. And I want to go back and look for where we grew up. And I think it's still, I know this church is still there, but I think it was, now it might be something else now, but it was a little Methodist church, I think. But um, God had to remind me, and he reminded me later in life. I mean, a lot later, like maybe in the last, within the last 10 years, uh, for sure. But um, I gave my heart to Jesus when I went to that church. And God's had me share this many times when I've ministered in congregations or groups and conferences or whatever, and to say that, that he said, I want you to tell the people, for every person that took a child to church and took a neighbor's child, or you've taken your children to church, and, you, and now you see them today and they're in a bad place. And, uh, and the Lord said to encourage you and to tell you, and this is his thank you to you too. And he said, you tell them, that I will revisit the seed that was planted in their Amen. hearts. And Mary, because he said that, um, I, I, and the Lord had to show me this just recently, Mary, within the last couple of weeks, he mm -hmm. said, you know, I guarded you because you had me in your heart, but you weren't getting anything to feed that, to make it grow. Oh. And, to, and so, but he said, uh, I was very different. I was very black and white my whole life after I got Jesus. And what I mean by that was, there was no compromise. I mean, I just, uh, and I wasn't You're just... You're black and white. I still am like that. And so, but it, with my, uh, my mom, and see, the enemy used this in my relationship with her. And God just recently showed this so clearly to me. He said, the reason that, um, that you weren't close to your mother, because there was, you know, there was a lot of uh, smoking and the things that would not be things that would be pleasing to the Lord, or watching soap operas, you know, a lot through the day, or... Um, or cussing or fighting or any of those kind of different things uh, that because my mom wasn't a Christian and she had yeah. a hard life you know with my dad at times too but there was just things so but because of the seed that was in me I was rejecting by the Spirit of God was guarding my heart yeah. that I didn't like those things I remember Johnny Carson I didn't care for Johnny Carson and I didn't like Magnum P.I. in his short shorts and my mom liked him liked him she thought he was cute and I said oh I don't want to see that either. You know? but the thing was God was showing me he said the things that you were rejecting were things that I was trying to cover your innocence from and things you didn't need in your spirit but you rejected your mother over them now can anybody relate because that that really rings true because it was hurting my relationship with my mom and as a teenager then I had all these walls up and um, the Lord showed me I was getting ready to minister and my granddaughter, Savannah Berry, who was once on The Voice, and she has an incredible voice. The Lord told me, he said, I've given you a voice to the world to the, to the world around you. I gave Savannah a voice to the world. And she was on The Voice and was on for a while. And um, God used that to open up major, major wonderful doors for mm -hmm. her. She was on just a short time, but enough for God to get his foot in there for her to open up the doors big. And now she's married to someone that's, uh, they both love God. She met him in, church, in their church, and she's uh, one of the main worship leaders today in their big church up in Sugar Land. Amen. So I love that. But anyway, so, you know, this just with God, um, you know, take me back real quick before I talked about Savannah. Um, Y'all help me. Y'all help, help me out there. <laughs> uh, Savannah is greatly used to God. Savannah, yes, my yeah, grand. You can watch just, her. You can watch her on YouTube. Absolutely. Savannah Berry, but she's, she's got a wonderful yeah, but voice. See, you know, she was singing songs in the world. Well, I, was I was talking about getting away from God. Let me pull yep, that. Yeah. Yep. I was getting away from God. But, uh, and then well, she was up singing at church. And she was singing Shine the Light. And... Um, while she was singing, I had a vision. That's where I was to thank you, Jesus, for bringing me back to this. Because they didn't, they weren't any help at all. <laughs> but anyway, so I was sitting there, Mary, and I had this vision. And the Lord took me into my house. And my mom had a place where she paid her bills. And that's not a fun place to sit, you know. She had a little desk. And I came around the corner, and I had my books with me, you know, my, my school books. And, um, and she was smiled at me, and she said, Hi, Pammer. You know, my name's Pam. She called me Pammer. Hi, Pammer. And... Um, and I didn't remember this, but I gave her a really awful, awful, hateful look just for her speaking to me. And in the vision that God was showing me while Savannah was singing and I was getting ready to preach and minister, I turned away and God showed me my mother's face. And maybe some of you out there really need to hear this and you'll remember this. 
too, but I saw her face and I broke her heart. Mary, I broke her heart, I hurt her. It hurt my mother when I looked at her so hateful. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she's thinking, why does she, why is she like this? Why does she dislike me so much? She just smiled at me and said hi to me, you know? And so I never thought a thing about, listen, for teenagers, I hope some of your kids are listening to this. I said, it hurts your family when you act ugly to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And you may be really relate to some of the stuff. Maybe you don't like some of the things your parents do, but the Bible says, honor your mother and your father. And so when I saw it, it really, it took my breath away, Mary, while I saw how much I hurt her. And God let me feel her heart and how that hurt her. And he said, you know, I've never dealt with you about this. He said, but you need to repent. And he said, you need forgiveness for the way you treated your mother. He said, and he said, and there'll be other things that follow that in your life. When you don't do right and you no. never repent, it'll follow you. It'll come up behind with your children and other things that happen. It will. Yeah. And so I, I sat there and I repented. Well, when I got up to minister, I shared the vision. People cried all over the room. And later on, they came up and where people were praying too. They, had, they raised their hands when I said, anybody else relate? And hands went up all over the room, Mary. Because as teenagers, a lot of times we're doing things. But it's because the parents may not be training them upright. They should, they should know to honor their father and mother. And that, auto that attitude wouldn't have been there, mm -hmm. you know. You know, it's so, the word, uh, the, there's ten commandments and only one of them has a blessing. Yes, you know, it says, yes. It uh, says, honor thy father and thy mother that your days would be long upon this earth. And Jack used to say, he said, what that really means is if you, if you don't act right, he said, we're just going to kill you. <laughs> you know, and then, then we'd all laugh, you know, but, but anyway. But, you know, yeah. uh, if, if you look at grown children, the children that honor their parents, yeah. they're successful in yes. life. Yes, and it feels they're so good. And, and you, you and look, yes. if you look at two children in a family, one honors the parents, the other one doesn't. The yeah. other one can't prosper in whatever they put their That's hands so to. True. They true. just yeah. are losing in every part of life. And, yeah. and, and if, if you train up a child that it's your, in your best interest to honor. Give them some examples. Yeah. Show them some people. Show them some people of how they treat their family and, yeah. and how they turn out. You know, God, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, God says, and God doesn't just say this to grown-ups. God doesn't say right. this to preachers. Yes. God doesn't just say it's to church. God says, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope. And a future. future yeah. And you know what? That future isn't called cancer. That, no. that, that hope is not called prison. God has a Drugs. plan for them. Yeah. You know, in, in Psalms 139, it says, your, uh, your eyes m saw my substance, yet being unformed. And in your book, they were written, the days fashioned for me, uh, when I was yet none of them. And so God has every single child written in his book. Yes. He has a plan and a destiny for each one of those children. And it's written in God's book in heaven. Each one of those children have a, at minimum of two angels. And they have, they have been, you know, told what the child's future is. Mm -hmm. And they will help the child. But the thing is, you know, Somebody's got to be praying for that child. Yes. And speaking of the angels, Training too, something that God just quick me when you said that about the angels, I got, I got more and more uh, away from uh, the black and white when I got up into my 17, 18. And then I always say I went, I had some years that I think, where'd my brain go? You know, until I was about uh, 21. And those were terrible years for me. I got, I put myself in very dangerous places. And you talked about the angels, Mary, and the Lord said, I still had angels with you. I still had protection for you. And I could have been killed several times. And uh, just some of the places that we went were very dangerous. And um, so I know that God, and that's what he told me. He said, I never uh, forgot that you had asked me into your heart. It's just that you, that you forgot. You didn't remember. And so he'll bring these things back to remember so people will remember that, that they did ask Jesus in their heart as a little child. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we got to break strongholds. We got to uh, yes, we do. You know, there's this is a, I wrote several things down about deliverance. This needs to be a great time of deliverance in this hour we're living in. Cast out devils. We're supposed to cast out devils and pray. We and, have to. Uh, we have These to, yeah. children are being raised on yes. Harry Potter. Right, and then the the vampire movies that kids were encouraged to Absolutely. watch. All those van terrible vampire. Love stories that came out, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Just and Halloween, you see these kids not in, you know, cute little costumes, mm -hmm. but they come with the blood yeah, and they go yeah. and, and uh, 
put tattoos all over their body, draw them on, you know, and, you know, at a very young age. I'll tell you something funny that God just spoke to me this morning and he said, and I was walking around in the house and thinking about all we're going to do today and, I, and he says, and he says, and Spongebob. And he said, here's this thing with a pair of underpants on. And I, would, I thought, I'm so glad that Sponge, Sp Spongebob wasn't around when my kids were little because I was really, you know, they would watch Johnny Quest <laughs> and boys, some yeah. little things like that. And we were very, they didn't get to watch the symptoms. Now, if they went to somebody else's house, they might have watched them. But mm -hmm. I didn't like the family situations and that. And because I was black and white, once I really came in strong with the things of God, I was, I was in, Mary, and you mm -hmm. are too. And we've talked about Easter and Christmas and all these things that have been so perverted with so many outward things that take away from who, what it's really about and who mm -hmm. it's about, really, mm -hmm. about who it's about, not what it's about, yeah. but who it's about. Who it's about. And what it's about. And so, but anyway. You know, um, in, in Acts, we're coming up to Pentecost. They yes. said this Pentecost is going to be, you know, the Passover the was the Passover. most by yes, like glory. Acts yeah. 12 ever mm -hmm. in history. And uh, it says we're coming up to a Pentecost to remember. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when on Pentecost in uh, Acts chapter 2, and it was written by the prophet Joel. It said, in the last days. Now, if they're calling that the last days, these are the last, last seconds of the, of the last hour of the last minute of the last days. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's children too. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy yes. just like that, that little seven-year-old. Your young men will see visions and your young men shall dream dreams. And, and he's going to pour all his spirit in the last days. And so what we want to do is we want to reach these children and give them a hope. Let them know that God has a hope and a future. And it's not, it's not stopping with this uh, quarantine that they have the world in. That God has a different plan. He has a hope and a future for them. And, and uh, he wants them to know him. He wants to speak to the kids. He wants to train. Uh, he wants the parents to know him. And so we thank you for being with us yes. today. God bless you. This this time has gone fast, Pam. Oh, my goodness. I've gone, oh, no. We Amen. love you. Jesus loves you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. And just tell other people so we can stay connected together. Amen. The Lord loves you. God bless. This is Ken and Mary Bostrom. We thank you for joining us today. We welcome you to watch us on kbntv.tv, YouTube, Facebook, mboston2.com. Also listen to us on WRNO Shortwave Radio. Contact us at kenbostonministries.org. God bless you today. Thank you.